Now to chilling new details about the Idaho murder suspect. In his own words, social media posts believed to be Brian Koberger's dating back years. Mona Lange has the details for it this morning. Good morning, Mola. Well, good morning, Michael. These online posts appear to go back about a decade when Koberger was a teenager. One of his former friends also providing some new insight this morning. This morning, newly uncovered social media posts painting a clearer picture of who Brian Koberger was as a teen years before he was charged with killing four University of Idaho college students. The New York Times first reporting on posts believed to be written by Koberger between 2009 and 2012, where he shared struggles with mental health and thoughts of suicide. Koberger writing in 2011, as I hug my family, I look into their faces, I see nothing. It is like I'm looking at a video game, but less. Koberger also writing he experienced depression, a constant thought of suicide, crazy thoughts, and delusions of grandeur, saying, I feel no emotion, and along with the depersonalization, I can say and do whatever I want with little remorse. Brian Koberger was someone who was struggling a lot in his teenage years about, um, you know, what was going on in his mind and trying to, trying to figure it out and, and, and how to resolve it. Koberger commiserating with other users about a neurological condition he says he suffered from called visual snow, where a person sees dots across their line of sight, similar to static on a television. Posting in 2010, my mind is never not on visual snow. This whole thing has made me crazy. I feel like my life is pointless because people can think about times with parents, childhood memories and be happy, and I won't be able to. He's talking on one hand about the, the visual symptoms that he's dealing with, but at the same time, there's, there really is a sense of desperation. In 2012, in his account's final post on the forum, Koberger writing he finally accepted his condition, saying, quote, it doesn't scare me anymore. Koberger graduating from high school and college, becoming a Ph.D. student in criminal justice at Washington State University before he was taken into custody December 30th after a raid at his parents' home in Pennsylvania. Police claiming DNA found in the trash there tied him to the scene of the gruesome Idaho murders. Overnight, his former attorney in Pennsylvania, Jason Labar, telling ABC News he is still in touch with Koberger's family and says his mother is still supportive of her son. She would first and foremost put out her heartfelt sympathies for the four families. She prays for them every day and can't imagine the situation that they're in. But on the flip side of that, she's obviously supportive and she wants to see how the case unfolds for her son, uh, really pressing the uh, presumption of innocence to anyone that will listen. A Koberger charged with four counts of murder has not entered a plea. He is currently being held without bail and due back in court in June, Michael. All right, Mola, thank you so much. And let's bring in ABC News contributor, former FBI agent Brad Garrett. Thank you for joining us this morning, Brad. And Brad, when you, you look at these social media posts, one of the themes, it seems to be a lack of empathy. Did that surprise you? Not in the least. Michael, when you look at cases similar to this one, where there is a lot of pre-planning, in his case, maybe even months, if, if not at least weeks, it becomes a fascination, it becomes an obsession, it becomes your identity. And so what happens is you take uh, that sort of obsession and compulsion and you overlay it with not having any feelings. I mean, think about this, Michael. He doesn't care about anyone but himself. Mm. And if you feel that way, it's very difficult uh, for you to have any guilt or remorse. And so these types of killings really become who the person is on many levels, which is, you know, obviously very sad, but it, but it, a real, true reality. Yeah, and, and but what about the visual problem he reportedly suffers from? Have you encountered anything like that before? You know, I've read about that before. Now, does that really play into what he's been charged with? I, I actually doubt it. Do I think it added to maybe his isolation? I mean, folks, to get into these types of crimes have really low self-esteem. It could have aggravated that, but I, I'm not sure that, that we could pull up anything and take it away that would then say this kid would not have turned out like he may have. And, and Brad, investigator, they sealed the search warrant for Koberger's apartment. The judge mm -hmm. finding, quote, premature public disclosure of the details will create a serious and imminent threat to law enforcement. Why would they do that? So 
I have actually done that in cases. You leave them sealed because you're not finished investigating. We don't know if they found the knife. Is there other pieces of information that link him to this crime? And so that's why you wait before you release. Brad Garrett, thank you for your time this morning. Appreciate you. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.